five minutes. Mr. Speaker, yesterday the students of Huguenot High School in Richmond, Virginia celebrated their graduation. Moments after the ceremony ended, as friends and family gathered outside for hugs and selfies, gunshots rang out. Panic ensued. And when the dust settled, a graduate, Sean Jackson, was dead. He was 18 years old. Sean's stepfather, he came to celebrate with him. Renzo Smith was dead. He was 36 years old. Five additional people were shot. Others sustained injuries, including Raina Jackson, Raina Jackson Smith, Sean's nine-year-old sister, who was hit by a car while fleeing the scene. Richmond police have a suspect in custody he is 19 years old. He knew the victim. He and Sean were in an ongoing dispute. We should not have to live like this. What should have been the happiest day of those kids' lives turned into every parent's worst nightmare. Those kids saw their freshman year cut short by COVID. They should have felt the joy yesterday and last night of graduating. Instead, their final memory of high school is marred forever by trauma. The active shooter drills that they endured throughout their school years did not prepare them for shooting at their graduation or in a public park, in a grocery store, at a theater, at their house of worship, at a concert, at a mall, walking down the street, on a highway, in their home, where are they safe? My son asks me this every time that there is a shooting on the news. Three months ago today, when I stood at this very spot to take my oath of office, you saw my son and daughter standing proudly beside me. You saw how excited my son was. You saw his dance moves. Four days later, one of his classmates shot himself accidentally with a gun he was using in a prop to record a video. He died. Last night, my husband and I had to tell our children that they're not going to school today and possibly for the rest of the year because of a shooting at a graduation less than a mile from our home. Every time there is a shooting, we go through this same routine. Every time my son is afraid wondering, will he be next? And I hug him and I say, I am doing everything within my power to keep you safe. As a state legislator in Virginia, I was proud to pass several pieces of gun violence prevention measures to do just that, including securing $12 million in funding to invest in our communities to address the root causes of gun violence. I was excited to see this Congress pass the first piece of substantive gun violence legislation in 30 years in a bipartisan measure. So you can imagine my disgust and my sorrow when after the Tennessee school shooting, one of our colleagues, one of our Republican colleagues in an interview on television said, we're not gonna do anything. That is unacceptable. We must take action to address the root causes of gun violence to ban assault weapons, implement universal background checks, gun storage, among other common sense measures that are popular with an overwhelming majority of voters, according to Fox News polling. I came here to solve problems. I came here to save lives. Thoughts and prayers are not enough. It is past time for action. Today, I mourn the lives lost in my district, my city, my school division, my neighborhood. Today, I seek to comfort their loved ones and those traumatized by the terror they felt last night. Today, I can recommit to doing everything within my power to make sure that this never happens again. Enough is enough. And I'm begging my colleagues in this body, do something. 
Mr. Speaker, I yield back.